everyone. Welcome to Mathematical Explorations. In this video, we will discuss about the basic concepts of tensors. At first, let us start with scalars and vectors. Scalars, a physical quantity that is completely described by its magnitude only. For example, volume, density, mass, etc. Let us consider mass, say 30 kg. Here, number of component is 1 as we need only magnitude. So, to define scalars, we need 0 basis factors. Factors, a physical quantity that is completely described by magnitude and direction. For example, velocity, force, acceleration, etc. Let us take the displacement of a particle from O to the position A. Then, if we want to calculate the displacement, then we have to take the distance of the point A from x axis, y axis, and z axis, and they are respectively 2, 4, 5. Then we can write factor OA is equal to 2i cap plus 4j cap plus 5k cap. So here 2, 4, 5 are components and i, j, k are basis factors or unit factors. That means to define factors, we need one basis factor for one component. Stress. Stress is defined as force per area. Now let us consider one cube and in a cube there are nine possible stresses. There will be nine different forces. Can we add them? Answer is no. We cannot add because the nature of the forces are different. From this figure, the components can be seen clearly. If we take the component sigma 1 1, then it represents the stress on the x1 plane. The first suffix represents the area of the x1 plane and the second suffix represents the force along x1 axis. These are the nine stress components acting on the cube. These components can be expressed in terms of matrix as sigma ij. But matrix is not tensor. Matrix is just array of numbers. Here, number of basis factor per component is 2. One component is for area and the other component is for force. Now tensors. Tensors defined mathematically are simply array of numbers or functions that transform according to certain rules under a change of coordinates. In a m-dimensional space, a tensor of rank n is a mathematical object that has n indices m to the power n components and of a certain transformation rule. Here, rank and dimension are two important things. Let us take a three-dimensional system of rank 2 then number of indices will be 2 and components will be 3 square that is 9 and they will obey certain transformation rules. Now if we shift their coordinate system then it will have no effect on the physical reality of the system and this is known as tensor. Let us consider this moving ball. To define a system we can consider different coordinate systems. Our choice of coordinates should have no effect on physical reality. None of these transformations will change the velocity of the ball. Now rank. Rank is number of directions required to describe it. In other words, it is the amount of information need to find the specific component. Here, rank is 1 is the number of basis 
factor per component is 1 and for the stress the number of basis factor per component is 2 so the rank is 2 a tensor of rank 0 is scalar as the number of basis factor in scalar is 0 now transformation it is often desirable to know the value of a tensor property in a new coordinate system so that the tensor needs to be transformed from the original coordinate system to the new one let us consider a first strength tensor which is a factor if we have a factor p with components p1 p2 p3 along the coordinate axis x1 x2 x3 like this oa factor where the components 2, 4, 5 are along x y and z axis now we want to define p in terms of p1 dash p2 dash p3 dash along new coordinate axis z1 z2 and z3 to express p in terms of new component first we need to define how the old and new coordinate systems are related to each other here the coordinate systems are related through rotation angle we need to measure the angle between the new coordinate and the old coordinate system we will express p1 dash p2 dash p3 dash in terms of p1 p2 and p3 this is the old coordinate system and this is the new coordinate system the components in old coordinate are p1 p2 p3 and the components in new coordinate system are p1 dash p2 dash and p3 dash so now to find p1 dash we will write p1 cos alpha 1 1 plus p2 cos alpha 1 2 plus p3 cos alpha 1 3 so here alpha 1 1 is the angle between x1 and z1 alpha 1 2 is the angle between x1 and z2 and alpha 1 3 is the angle between x1 and z3 similarly we can write other two values p2 dash and p3 dash in the same way for simplicity we replace cos alpha with a then p1 dash equal to p1 a11 plus p2 a12 plus p3 a13 p2 dash will be equal to p1 a21 plus p2 a22 plus p3 a23 p3 dash will be equal to p1 a31 plus p2 a32 plus p3 a33 that is p1 dash is equal to summation j goes from 1 to 3 a 1 j p j this is written in terms of summation sign similarly we can write p2 dash and p3 dash in terms of summation further we can write p i dash equal to summation j goes from 1 to 3 a i j p j where i goes from 1 2 and 3 now using the einstein summation convention we can write p i dash equal to a i j p j which is the transformation rule for any tensor from one coordinate system to another coordinate system thank you See you in the next video.